Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, September 18th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of biology as it applies to botany. Researchers from Mexico have been studying how bacteria and fungi interact with trees and have shown significant acceleration in tree growth. They worked with a variety of tree species, both for the purposes of reforestation and horticulture. By studying bacteria found near root systems in nature, they were able to classify a variety of species as growth promoters that protect the tree from pathogens and even help them access water and certain nutrients. Also important are the fungi in direct contact with the root systems, which helps the plant adapt to new environments when transplanted and helps it gather certain nutrients like phosphorus. The presence of this fungi even seems to drive more efficient photosynthesis by causing the tree to use less water. All of these benefits combined together seems to greatly accelerate the overall development of the tree. In timber species, they were able to achieve two to three meter tall trees in around three years. This normally takes six or seven years. With fruit trees like citrus and guava, they achieved fruit bearing maturity in three to four years rather than six. All of this is very encouraging, and the researchers hope to do more work on finding which specific species work best with different types of trees, and how to best promote the growth of these beneficial microorganisms, which could eventually greatly enhance reforestation efforts and fruit production. Next is news from the world of medicine. Studies conducted at Stanford University have found a mechanism that may allow an already approved cancer drug to help those with diabetes. You see, this drug works by inhibiting a vascular growth factor in the body, which means growing tumors cannot form blood vessels as easily and therefore become starved of oxygen. It had also been anecdotally reported that cancer patients given these types of drugs while also having diabetes found their diabetes easier to manage. The recent study done in mice was able to identify the exact mechanism. As you probably know, diabetes is either a lack of insulin or a lack of sensitivity to the hormone, which reduces the body's ability to store glucose from the blood. A major player in the process of storing glucose is the liver, which is where the growth factor inhibitor has most of its effect. Exposing diabetic mice to this drug and similar compounds caused some regression of the blood vessels in the liver. This depleted some of the liver cells of oxygen, which sounds bad, but it actually triggered a variety of proteins to increase cell survival, including a protein that drastically increases the sensitivity of an insulin receptor. Basically, diabetic mice exposed to this kind of inhibitor had a much higher tolerance to glucose through the liver cells being partially deprived of oxygen. It'll take more study to see if the same result is as obvious in humans, but it is encouraging since the drug is already approved for cancer treatment. Even if it can't be used directly, it could accelerate the development of similar drugs, specifically targeted to diabetes. We end with an update from the world of material science. As we've mentioned on Brainstorm before, the production of cement, specifically the heat necessary for its production, is actually a major contributor to CO2 emissions. Some scientists from the University of Copenhagen have analyzed a more sustainable form of cement and actually found it to be better than traditional cement. This kind of cement has actually been used for many years, but only in certain areas like Brazil. There, sugarcane processing produces a large amount of ash as a byproduct that needs to be disposed of. So they simply cut some of the cement in their mixture with ash. By doing this, less of the actual cement powder is used in the mixture, reducing overall consumption and requiring less power to be used producing it. When the scientists were given samples of this cement, they analyzed it through neutron scattering, which revealed enhanced bonding with the water in the substance, which made the concrete stronger. The hope is that these results will encourage companies to adopt the same practice with other sources of ash and on larger scales, reducing their cost increasing the quality, and potentially saving a lot of CO2 from being released into the atmosphere. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first story, if you could pick one plant to have accelerated growth, what would it be and why? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.